Should New Mexico take a step back to look at the impacts and efficacy of charter schools? It's a question that pops up regularly in the state legislature, and the Albuquerque Public School Board recently considered and later postponed a decision on whether or not to send a letter to lawmakers supporting a temporary halt to the creation of additional charter schools. Senator Snyder, do you think this pandemic is driving this new interest in a possible moratorium? What's going on here? Well, truthfully, I hadn't thought of that aspect of it. No, I don't think so. Okay. I think, uh, I, and I'm biased on this subject, so I just think that... In, in what sense um, your, is your bias? Well, I'm very pro-charter school. Okay. Uh, I, I think it's one more step in trying to eliminate charter schools. And I have to laugh. When they were first created... That primarily the teachers union said, oh, it's the first step toward creating vouchers. Vouchers will have to come out of this. And that hadn't happened so far, at least not in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like it's, I think it's, once again, I think it's all politics. I don't, I think that. But let, let me ask the, you this, Senator, the numbers, the numbers are not politically driven. Is there a sense of that lower enrollment possibilities from this pandemic? Lower enrollment from the pandemic, yes, yeah. for sure. But I, I think that has more to do with homeschooling ah. than it does with charter schools. Mm -hmm. And I think people have found it. And I know some people said, wow, we were so successful with homeschooling. Our kids are really jumping ahead. We, we'd like to keep doing this. So they are. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, the numbers that we hear are the kids want to get back in school, but mom and dad think it's great. Um, so I think the numbers we're hearing are a little bit distorted. I don't think it's the charter schools creating the lack of enrollment. Okay. However, that's an option that parents now have. Mm -hmm. So if they're taking advantage of it, then in fact, it would impact the individual, like APS schools. That's a good point. But, let me let me swing Senator Grego on this point here. Opponents say charter schools often outperform public schools, and a moratorium takes away a family's right, what Senator was just getting to, a family's right to choose. They also say many of those charter schools cater to underserved or vulnerable populations as well. Is that a valid argument in your view? You know, those are talking points. I mean, I'm not, a, yeah. I'm not an expert on the research, but I do know that the, the results have been mixed. I mean, there's some schools that really outperform and remember charter schools are public schools you okay. have to mm -hmm. admit people by lottery so there's a lot of confusion around them being private schools mm -hmm. they're public schools so um there are schools that absolutely outperform uh public schools in albuquerque and around the state there are also some schools that are frankly pretty ill-conceived and with folks who just don't know what they're doing we've had several scandals around that so yeah. you know, I'm, I'm one of those rare animals where i'm a hardcore public education supporter was what came up through the public education system. And I happen to have a kid in a charter school and I helped actually start a couple charter schools. I think where they work well for kids who need something different to keep them engaged, whatever that is, is that is that extra help or arts or whatever it is. I think that that's a that's an area that they serve. I am sympathetic, just to be fair, that we have to think through this idea that maybe Diverting kids away from their neighborhood schools, as opposed to investing in their neighborhood schools, um, is something we have to just be honest about. Is that is that really happening? Um, I think that the, the 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 pandemic has really sort of kind of um, poured salt on an open wound for folks who who are worried about charters, their effect on resources, their effect on diverting mm -hmm. uh, educators and so on, and and kids to neighborhood schools. You know, not everybody has a great neighborhood school. Uh, a lot of the communities around the state do, but not all do. Mm -hmm. and, and they have to choose as a parent, you have to choose, like, do you, if you still want to have a public school, but you want to have a different kind of experience for your kid. And that's what we decided. We decided, you know, our, our, our son really was wanted something a little bit different in his mm -hmm. education. And then we supported that. Mm -hmm. Had he not gotten into the lottery, by the way, they, they get him by lottery. He probably would have gone to his neighborhood school. And, and I think that's, that's that's certainly uh, an option that parents always have, in addition to keeping their kids home, if that's what they think is best for them. Good point there. You know, Julianne, as we mentioned, APS considered sending a letter to lawmakers encouraging a temporary moratorium, but they backed off, at least for now, after the public outcry. I I'm wondering, do you expect other school districts to also consider jumping into this debate? 
Well, you know, this debate, as others have pointed out, is not a new one. Right. Um, certainly, it's something that, that you know, uh, districts all over the state have been dealing with. You know, uh, Santa Fe Public Schools is not immune to that. They had kind of a well-publicized um, discussion, a dispute with a charter school that was, you know, using a building that, that Santa Fe Public Schools wanted to use. Um, I think it's also of note that, you know, back in 2019, when, when this bill was at the legislature and didn't go anywhere, mm -hmm. um, Shelby Perea from the Albuquerque Journal reports that APS opposed the bill. They didn't want a moratorium then. Um, so I, I was kind of wondering, I don't, I don't follow APS politics real closely, but I'm sure the, the board composition has changed since then. And, and we do know that the enrollment numbers have dropped again since then. And this is alarming you know, to school officials that are trying to make plans. And I think there's this um, instinct to feel threatened you know, by the charter schools, um, as I think has has come up also. So I think, you know, we we haven't solved it. And um, and I don't know that the the legislature placing a moratorium would necessarily solve it. I mean, we often have this moratorium ideas like, well, we need to stop stop all the action so we can study it. And and, you know, we can study it without stopping it and without, you know, affecting educational outcomes for kids that are hoping to stay in their charter school or, or charter schools that are, you know, getting ready to launch. So mm -hmm. um, I, I definitely think we could stand to have, you know, study on this issue. It's a good point there. You know, Senator Snyder, I got to wonder if we're sort of just in a bubble here because we really haven't seen an increase in charter schools in the last five years. I mean, when you think about it, there's around 96 statewide serving 28,000 kids. Is this much ado about nothing? I mean, this is 28,000 kids. It's not exactly a ton of kids. It isn't. And and if you were t saying those 20,000 were all in Albuquerque, right. that would be almost nothing. Good point there. But I don't know and don't have the statistics, and maybe they do, on charter schools in rural areas. I don't have much information on that. I, of course, I'm, I hear everything about Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. But, I, yeah, in some ways it is, because if you take out two years basically of pandemic, then you only have a few years of things being, have been skewed, I think, by the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe it's premature to be doing that. But I also agree with Julianne, you don't have to shut them down to study them and see, or they're not shutting them down, let me get that corrected. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't have to stop creating charter schools to study their effectiveness. Mm -hmm. And like Senator Griego said, some have been outstanding, really, really good, really beneficial for the student because we know, we know this is a fact, kids learn differently in different environments. So what makes one child learn then, I, I mean, to me, the idea of music and theater and science where that interest, because part of schooling is getting the child to pay attention. That's right. And the, that if you can do let me, it. Let with, me do this, Senator. Let me let me swing to yeah. Senator Gregor real quick, just for uh, this last half a minute. <laughs> Senator, some high profile charter schools have run into financial issues. You know, is there enough oversight? Are, are we at, are we in lockstep with the needs of the charter schools and what we need as, as citizens? You know, there have been some really uh, bad actors um, who started charter schools and took advantage of, mm -hmm. of public funding. So, and I think most of them have been held accountable. Um, so the short answer is, Gene, I think there's always room for more oversight. Right. APS decided they were going to charter their own school. So now as your charter school in Albuquerque, you can either go to the APS system or you can go to the state. And that's, that's right. the way it works here. So first of all, you don't just show up one day and open a school. You have to you have to have a charter, you have to have a governing board. There's a lot of work to be done. Mm -hmm. And if you don't perform, you can be shut down. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the arguments for charter schools is unlike some low performing schools that for whatever reason aren't succeeding, right. it's hard to shut them down. Charter schools, you can be shut down. If you have corrupt management or if you're just not performing, you can be shut down. And, and it's I think, happened. That's right. Yeah, yeah, and it's happened. So, but I do, I think there's always room for more oversight. We had that conversation around, you know, maybe the state auditor or somebody should really be doing no oversight, but look at what happened at APS with the, <laughs> the recent scandal. So I think everybody could use a little more yeah. oversight, to be honest with you. Good, good point. Good final thought there. That's all the time we have right now on that topic. But we'd love to know what you think. Drop us a line on Facebook or Twitter and let us know if you support a temporary moratorium on charter schools and why. Up next for our group, a new hotline is on the way for behavioral health emergencies. But will its promises ring hollow?